People of God, welcome home to the First Congregational Church of Rockport on this beautiful, yet another amazing, beautiful, sunny fall Sunday. Friends, no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself on your walk of life, your faith journey, we hope you will consider this your home. Whether for the next hour or for a lifetime, here in this congregation, here in God's church, our doors and our arms and our Zooming and Facebook and YouTube are always open to welcome you home again and again and again. And we are here with open hearts to welcome you. Now, today will be a little bit different worship. Today, we are celebrating the amazing music ministry that we've always had in this church, but celebrating the way that our music ministry has stepped up to new levels and different ways of bringing music to you during this time of pandemic, this time when we, not, we do not gather in person, but though we are scattered throughout the world, we are gathered together in this place. Today, it's all about the music, which is part of worship, which is prayerful, which is inspiring, and is very scriptural. I want to read to you a few things, providing I can make everything work here. In Scripture, in Colossians 3, verses 16 to 17, it says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom God gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of Jesus the Christ, giving thanks for him through God. One of my favorite theologians, pastors, is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian and pastor who was placed in jail by the Nazis during World War II and eventually executed. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer says this about music that I've always loved. Music will help dissolve your perplexities and purify your character and sensibilities. And in time of care and sorrow, listen to that, in time of care and sorrow will keep a fountain of joy alive in you. A fountain of joy. Surely, people of God, throughout this time of pandemic, has been going on in this church since 1755. Music has lifted us up. Since March, our virtual chancel choir, our youth choir, known now has the 12 School Street Singers and the Hearst Family Singers and so many guest singers and performers have blessed us with ways of lifting up joy in our hearts through their music and helping us come together and enjoy and worship God together in so many ways. Today, it's all about the music. I hope you will enjoy this, and thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Hello, I'm Kathleen Vandemark, known as Kate. I am a retired internist geriatrician who practiced clinically for years, and I was very proud of the fact that I was among the first group of credentialed geriatricians in the United States. I practiced clinically until I was recruited to administrative roles, but I now use my experience as a board member for Senior Care, Inc., which is our Essex County Area Agency on Aging. Before uh, I retired to Cape Ann, I had too little time for consistent choir or choral work, and um, I'm delighted to have been able to join this choir. This was due to an invitation some years ago uh, from Siggy Lindo. 
it is hard to find words to express the joy of working with such an incredible music program as exists at uh, First Congregational Church of Rockport. And I really thank you for welcoming me into that community. Thank you. I'm Susan Butterworth, and I've been singing in the virtual choir since May or June. I'm an Episcopalian. I live in Marblehead, where I worship at St. Michael's Church, and I am the Episcopal Chaplaincy Associate at MIT. My major role in the Lutheran Episcopal Ministry at MIT is leading Teze prayer on Sunday evenings. Since March, we've been meeting by Zoom, and while we yearn to hear each other's voices in harmony, the time of quiet, of chanting, of prayer, of community and fellowship is precious and uplifting. I invite you to join us at Teze at MIT any Sunday evening at 7.30. We have a website, Teze at MIT.org. We have a Facebook page. I'm sure either Phil or Jeff could probably help you to get in touch with me. So I want to thank you for welcoming me into your community, and we'd love to welcome you at Teze. probably heard that piece for quite a few weeks before every service. That's the um, procession of the nobles that Phil and I recorded uh, with a few other friends of ours. And that was me playing the trumpet that you hear on the recording. My name's Richard Given, and I live in Ayr, Massachusetts, which is approximately 55 to 60 miles from Rockport. And I've known Phil for 30 years. Phil went to Eastman, I went to Eastman. I didn't know him at Eastman, but we had that in common. And, um, and we've been playing quartets, solo recitals. We played for Pavarotti together at one time. Um, so we've had quite a background together. Phil is one of my favorite musicians, and we're very lucky to have him. So I am that wordless tenor that you've been seeing in the back of your choir every week, uh, incognito, hopefully. And uh, I'm a professional trumpet player, and this is what I've done for a living my entire life, over 50 years. And uh, I got into music in Rutland, Vermont, where I grew up. and. Uh, I remember one day they were having demonstrations at the school and my grandmother mentioned, why don't you try the trumpet? I said, okay, let's see what happens. And uh, I was lucky enough, my dad was a great jazz piano player, but he happened to manage a music store there. So I had access to a really beautiful trumpet when I first started, I was very lucky. And then I went to a couple of good music schools like New England Conservatory, Eastman, and I'd already decided in ninth grade I wanted to be a trumpet player. How foolish can you be, right? So it worked out. I got out of school, had a job playing in an orchestra in Canada. My first gig when I got back to Boston after that was playing with Stevie Wonder and the Supremes, of all people. Then I played a lot of Broadway shows for the last umpteen million years subbed with the Pops and the Boston Symphony and the ballet, and the opera, and many orchestras around New England. But I did a couple of national tours. Phil wanted me to mention this. Um, some Broadway tours, first of all, Sweeney Todd, 42nd Street, Les Miserables, and the Belushi uh, version of Pirates of Penzance. So that was years on the road, and it was, it was fun. So basically I've been playing eight shows a week for billions of years and teaching lots of students too, which has been great. 
and it's been my pleasure to be part of the um, the choir in Rockport. And um, I'm glad you're putting up with me, I hope. And uh, so that's who I am, in case you didn't know who that person was in the choir that you see every week. And um, I'm hoping someday that we can actually get to sing together as a group. Um, and maybe that will happen in the not too distant future. But I think Phil and I are going to be playing a couple of things coming up organ and, and trumpet, one Gabriel's oboe that we've recorded, and that may be on the agenda one of these days. So thanks to Jeff Lyon for all of his amazing work with these videos. He's been extremely patient with me, and uh, hopefully this, um, this pandemic will be over and we can all get together. So everyone be well, and we'll see you again next Sunday. So this week, Rhiannon, Quentin, and I sang a shape note piece called Sweet Morning. We were asked to share a bit about the shape note music tradition. So the history of shape note music is really a history of solfege. Now most people are familiar with the southern syllable system, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and so on. Uh, but the concept of solfege was actually developed in the early 11th century by Guido Varezzo. And this system uses six syllables, ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la. 
and the system allowed vocalists to relate all pitches and intervals while mutating across the span of their range. This tool was used to teach young or new members of the church how to read music effectively. And the syllables were actually part of a mnemonic device. The singers would point to joints on their hand or fingers to remind themselves um, where they were in the hexachord, the six syllable system, and how to mutate to the next, which is similar to changing keys. Now, you may have noticed that I did not say do, but ut. And the first and lowest note of the system is called gamma ut. But if you contract gamma ut to gamut, that can also refer to the entire span of pitches. So if you have ever used the phrase running the gamut, uh, you are referencing 11th century music theory. So in 16th century Britain, people realized that you didn't actually need six syllables to relate pitches. You could do it with just four, fa, sol, la, and mi. Now the idea was brought to the US by English colonists and the four note system continued to be refined and notation first appeared in print in 1801 in a manual called The Easy Instructor, uh, which was by William Little and William Smith of Philadelphia. The system was adopted widely in the US as a teaching method for choral singing and to facilitate congregational singing. The systems were developed primarily in New England, but they quickly spread through Appalachia and the southern United States, where traditions are still widely practiced to this day. In fact, shape note music has had a renaissance in the past 40 years and is now performed all across the US, Canada, the UK, and throughout Europe. So the system used in Sweet Morning is the Fa Sol La four note solfege system. The name shape note, as you may have surmised, describes the shape of the note heads and they tell us what solfege syllable each note is and consequently each interval. So when you look at an image of the music, you can see a triangle, which is fa, an oval, which is sol, a square, which is la, and a diamond, which is mi. Now, you may be slightly alarmed at the first verse of the piece, as it sounds like a cacophony of solfege. However, this is a traditional part of shape note singing. Every time the group begins a new piece, they sing through it once on solfege. This way, we learn the notes and rhythms before launching into the text. Now, it's also very important to note at this point that shape note music is primarily for those singing who are traditionally amateur vocalists. People may go to a sing or convention, but there is typically no audience. So the performance of shape note music is of, by, and for the congregation, for the singers. This also explains the unadorned and unabashed nature of vocal production in shape note singing. Thusly, you can hear that we adopted this style in our recording. Now, something else you might notice is our synchronized arm movements. Uh, traditionally, there's a leader who can be anyone in the group, even someone who just joined that day, um, and they help the group establish and keep the beat. And everyone is expected to move their hand up and down in order to feel the pulse. This is highly effective in keeping a consistent tempo throughout the song, especially when a large group is singing the music. So, you can see why this is such an attractive model for congregational singing or music education. Now, a quick note on Sweet Morning. The text is based off of Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 16, which is quoted at the top of the sheet music as, And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. But this can also be translated as battle cry or battle shouts at noontide. This aesthetic was clearly taken into consideration in both the writing of the text and the music. It has a driving pulse and tells the story of a triumphant march to heaven. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Hi, everybody. I'm Christina Martin. I um, conduct the youth choir. And I'm sharing my screen today because I think uh, the pictures say more that, that can help me uh, tell you the story. What I'd like to do is share with you the process that the kids are going through. Um, certainly, we miss wearing the blue robes and getting together and fellowship hall coffee hour after church. And we miss collaborations with the Anasquam Village Church and other singers in our community. You see Bella here when she was younger. And we miss the challenge of staying quiet in the, in the front pew, <laughs> especially when we bring our dogs and cats. And I'm missing uh, Logan's spontaneous artwork there in the front pew, but we're still getting some um, online. This is last January when we had th this group of kids and it was their very first, their first beginning days at the choir. They didn't have very long to have an experience there at church because we had to change our MO. This is what we do now. And I thought I'd like to show you what happens. I send them a piece of music like this. It might have a few little uh, instructions that show them where, when to go down, when to go up. Because also remember, they're just learning how to read music. Then I send them a recording. Um, it sounds something like this, uh, like this. Go now in peace. The first time, listen only. Then you'll sing it three times. On the last time, your voice goes up higher at the end. Listen only. One, two, ready and listen. Go now in peace. Et cetera. So that's the audio that they work with. Uh, let, me, let me get back here. And then, then we have a Zoom meeting. Now everyone wasn't present on this day, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, and sometimes Katie attends with us and uh, the kids are on their computers and we're having a good time. We share things together and we go over the music, both visually and auditorial uh, and the audio version, and then we'll sing it back and forth. It's not a perfect sound, but it's a way to learn the piece. Then they spend a couple of days with it. And uh, I might go to their ba backyards where the air is free. This was, uh, earlier in the spring, actually. And this is in the fall. Another backyard here. Another backyard. <laughs> Another backyard. This, you can see, is in the springtime. Then the, the parents, the great collaborators and videographers and coaches and support team, they'll start sending me these video clips of the kids after they've learned the song and they're singing along with the recording and sending their own voices. So I receive these in my mailbox or on my text messages. And I've told the parents that it's like Christmas every time I get one of these, uh, one of these texts. I just can't wait to hear what it sounds like and then start imagining how to put them all together. Sometimes they record themselves. And here we are. Kyla, looking forward to the Christmas season and also picking up on my, my own sentiment of having it feel like Christmas, sent this recording recently of, uh, in, in a Christmas setting, literally a Christmas present. Um, we've started and we've, we've thought it's been one of my dreams for about 20 years to do some on location singing and recording with students and who knew that this was going to be the the pandemic was going to be the thing to, to launch that, make that dream become a reality. The 12 school street singers, which I've, I've just coined that, that title because the kids are working mostly remotely. It's a good grounding title to know where, where this all, where our church services are grounded at 12 school street in Rockport. I want to thank Jeff and Derek and Phil and Katie for their support all of the congregation for their support and special things like this. John Cooney helped us have access to drive up to the quarry yesterday morning and do some on location recording up there on the most glorious day. 
I want to say something about our senior mentor of the choir, Bella. She's been singing since she was four years old. And now she finds herself the leader of the group and very helpful to me and to all of us as she paves the way. And I want to show you this. Who knew this is, this is one short recording of one time when I was recording Bella when she was four and getting ex uh, exasperated with my technological skills because I had to redo several times. Um, I'm better now, but they're helping me improve. Okay. Now I see if I can find her. I think I can send it right away. Oh, wait a minute. I think you might have to do it again. Do it again. Do it one more time. Okay, I'll <laughs> And most of all the parents, it would be absolutely impossible without the parents, their support, their good nature, their patience, their coaching, and their love. We're still singing. Thank you, everyone. This is a brief interlude of the music so we can do a few things we normally do during worship, and that is to pray. Pray for each other, pray for our community, pray for the created world. If you would join me in prayer now. And all these prayers come from our Friday prayer time together. Today, we pray for Jay and Barbara, for Abby and Jessica, for Pam and Nancy, for Lillian and Jeff and Carol and Lynn, for Karen and Jackie, for Marge and Steve and Chad and Rachel, for Helen and David and Susan, for Jean and Gary, for Diane and Helen, for Marcia, Eleanor, Doris, Martha and Jack, for Dina and Alex, for Dallas, for Marjorie, for Harriet, for Danny, for Karen, for Maya. We pray for Herb and Emmy and Anne and Susan and Maja, for Anthony and GV and Bert and Elizabeth, for Marjorie, for Willie, for Bernice, for Pat, for Bridget, Linda, Bill and Vicky, Jean and Bill, for Pauline, for Joy, for Cindy. 
We pray for Jim and Charles, for Wendy and Jean, for Daniel and Joanne, for Charlene, for Yoshi, for Kate, for Kirsten, for Kathleen, for Louisa, for Annalise, and for Harriet. We pray for Gardy, who passed away this last Wednesday, and for his family and friends. We will have a Zoom funeral service for Gardy on the 23rd at 7 p.m. And information for that will go out sometime over the next week. We give great gratitude for our families and our friends prayers of thanksgiving for our online community, prayers for our nation, for unity, and for peace. We ask for prayers for the town of Rockport, prayers for the Rockport Fire Department, prayers that we find a way to create a better world for our youth, prayers that each and every one of us, all, will be present in these moments. We pray for those who are affected by fires and hurricanes and droughts. We pray for those places within this country and throughout the world that have seen an increased number of tropical storms and hurricanes for the Gulf Coast, for Florida, for Central America, and especially we pray today for the countries of Nicaragua and Honduras who I believe are facing yet another hurricane landing somewhere in that part of Central America. We pray for all those throughout God's created world who have been affected or infected by the coronavirus, for those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. We pray for students, teachers, and educators throughout the world. We pray for their families. We pray for all those who are doing virtual education, those who are doing hybrid education. We pray for family members, parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles and siblings who are now learning to be part and teach at home and help with virtual classes. We pray for patience. We pray for patience. We prayed for renewed strength and energy. We pray to the, for the end of systemic racism, for the end of discrimination, of oppression of all kinds. We pray for our LGBTQ siblings. We praise and give, and for the kindness of our pets. We pray for God's presence in our world every day. We pray that God will help us to keep connected. We pray that sometimes we need help accepting where we are and not where we would truly like to be, especially these days where the spread of the pandemic seems to be growing and our ability to move about from state to state within even our own states has been limited even more. We pray for those in chronic pain, for those who miss their families, for all those who are lonely. We pray for those with addictions. We pray and give thanks to everybody who brings to our world the gift of music, that amazing gift. And we here at the Old Sloop give thanks for all those who take part in our music ministry, everyone. And we encourage you to continue to sing together as a congregation. Yes, you are muted throughout this, but when the choirs sing, you will find on the screen the words and I encourage you to sing along at home. And for those of you who don't think you sing, can sing, and those of you who often don't sing in church, and I know exactly who you are, that's right, right there to the left, sing. It is a beautiful way, and your voices are all beautiful. 
I want to give a shout out this morning and welcome Jessica home to Rockport. It's good to have you back in our community, Jessica. Welcome home David and Lee and Gwen and Steve. I give a great thanks and shout out to each and every one of you who I see your beautiful faces here this morning. And I can see where you would be if you were here in person with me. And yes, that means off to my left right here in the first pew, that would be the first pew on the right if you're facing me, is usually the youth choir, excuse me, the 12 School Street Singers. And one of the great joys for me during worship is watching them while they're in here to watch them interact with each other and encourage each other, to watch them sing the hymns together, to watch Logan draw pictures, and every once in a while he draws one of me. Um, thank you, Logan. Those are some of the coolest pictures that I've ever seen. And you do me justice in whatever form you paint me or draw me. Before we join together in the Lord's Prayer, I would like to try something for a dear friend of mine. And I put this on. Can you still hear me? Yes? No? Perfect. This is to show you that the voice you will hear next is not mine. It's pre-recorded, like everybody else's. But within our congregation over the last couple of weeks, we have people that have lost loved ones to the virus. We have had people and friends of this community who have lost their battle with cancer. And so if I can do this, this is for all of them. The lone wild bird in lofty flight is still with you, nor leaves your sight. And we are yours, we rest with you. Great Spirit, come, rest in us too. People of God, I invite you now to join me in the Lord's Prayer. And today we will be using the traditional Lord's Prayer. And as always, I invite you to say it in whatever way you are the most comfortable, in whatever language. Even if you stay silent and say it in your heart. Please join me as we are bold to say together this morning, our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and... All right, I have to stop right there. Your pastor admits that he just blanked on the Lord's Prayer. This has happened to me once before when I was in seminary and serving a church in Somerville, and I asked the pastor of the church what it meant, and she looked at me and she went, you might as well just give up and go home now. In reality, she gave me a hug and said, it's okay. God knows that you know this. Sometimes, maybe you get a little stage fright. So it's times like this where I actually lose my voice. I'm not sure where to go next. So I invite you, well, we're going to move forward. Because if I try to lead you in the Lord's Prayer again, I know that I am going to get lost. I am sorry. One of the people that I just sang for was Gardy. Many of you may not know who Gardy was. Gardy had been coming to this church long before I got here. He was a staple at the Wednesday night potluck dinner, and he would bring his family. And I know every week 
his daughters, Renee and Crystal, would come. And the dog would come too. And I'm, I'm sorry, Wendy, I'm forgetting the dog's name. I can see you, but the dog was always there. And Gardy was diagnosed within the last year with cancer. And he started coming and spending time with me. We found out that we had a lot in common. Gardy was a sailor. Gardy also knew all the trails and all the things in Dogtown, I think, by heart. And probably one of the people that would never get lost up there. Gardy passed away, as I said, Wednesday, and it was a great joy and blessing that Salem Hospital, even though they had changed some of the stuff they do, allowed me to come in and be with him, to pray for him, to sing with him, and to be with the family. But that song I sing, Lone Wild Bird, is one I sing for many people, not often in church, but at home. May we each be so blessed to remember those who have touched our lives, to hold them up, whether they're siblings or parents or grandparents, whether they're friends, neighbors, members of a community you belong to, and know that they hear you. And remember this, that we are told by Christ that we are with Christ and they are with Christ through God as well. And that means we are always connected together, always. Everybody who has gone before us. Right now I'm looking out into the sanctuary and they fill this place. May we remember each and every one of them and know that they walk with us every day. Amen and amen. And now, I will turn it back to the music.
friends in Christ, this is our time together that we lift up all the announcements that we need to share. And we have a few of them going forward as we're getting closer to the holidays. Um, I want to remind you that this week is the Old Sloop Landing. Delivery will be this Wednesday and orders have to be in by Monday, tomorrow, by 5 o'clock. There will also be a special Thanksgiving delivery, which will take place on Monday or Tuesday of the week of Thanksgiving. But Regina will be sending out more information about that today so that you have it. Um, she has another announcement for me. Oh, a group of us here at church, Wendy Woodbury, Kate uh, Welch, Katie Welch, Regina and myself have been working for the last couple months on putting together a package that will come to each and every one of your households on things to do during Advent, things you can do at home, um, things that you can do within the community, and just a, a way of bringing Advent into your house. Those will be ready to be picked up or mailed. We're hoping if you're local, you can come and pick them up. You can pick them up this coming Wednesday. Um, and if you would be willing to help us maybe bring them to people's homes where you can, with um, all the safe precautions that are in place, with masks and distancing, bring them to people's homes. That would save us um, a lot of uh, money at the post office. Um, I want to make sure I have all that right. The other thing that we're going to do, and this comes from the music um, group, uh, Advent is coming in a couple of weeks. The first Sunday of Advent is the first Sunday after Thanksgiving. And we want to make sure that while we're having Advent worship during Advent, makes sense, that you can sing at home. So not only will you have the music, you will have hymnals. So we're going to make it possible for people to come by and pick up a red hymnal because that's the hymnal we tend to use most in Advent. But if you'd like a black one to take home, you can do that too. And you can do that probably this coming um, Wednesday, but we will figure it out and let you know. And we hope you take great care and love of these hymns, hymnals. And when we return to in-person worship, we will invite you to bring those back with you so that if we can sing at that time, we don't know yet when that will be, and if we can sing in a building, we will have them here. So those are the, some of the things coming up. We will continue to offer Bible study on Wednesdays, um, storytelling on Wednesdays, which is just gets better and deeper and more fun. Um, youth group on Wednesday evenings. Katie has um, time with her on Thursdays. And then we have our prayer time together Fridays at four. These are all things that you get Zoom information about and you all receive them. I believe that's all I have. Hopefully I got all the texts right from this morning. And I just wanna thank everybody involved with music for everything they do for all of us. And now we will send you back to the virtual chancel choir. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for them springing fresh from the word morning has Praise for them. 
I thank you for joining us today. I thank you for your spirit in these moments. And I want to leave you with this prayer. It is written by the Reverend Quinn Caldwell. And I used it back, I think, in April or May. But it seems that this message still needs to be heard and it is beautiful. So I leave you with this as you go forward into the week. Now I walk me out my door. I pray thee, Lord, protect from spores. Bless, dear Lord, the care I take, not to worsen this outbreak. Guide me safely through the day and bring me home masked and okay. Amen.